nine, okay, so by far the majority of her life, uh, or, yeah, and, um, and I think, I will say, has not always been fully appreciated for how good she's been until really this, this year when, uh, fortunately, let's just go through it, first uh, American actress ever to win a Cesar Award, Francis <laughs> Kennedy Austin. And a handful of critics awards, including tomorrow night, she will receive the New York Film Critics Circle Award for Best Supporting Actor. And onwards and upwards, so very happy to have you here. And um, let's let's talk to begin with about how this project first crossed your radar. I worked with a producer named Charles Jobe, who did On the Road, and he uh, was interacting at that point with Olivier Isaias, who directed the film, um, and uh, really championing his work, and he's a really young producer, which is awesome, because it's fun to see young people be forward and risk takers and like actually successful at doing so. And I had done that with him once, and then he introduced me to not only Walter, uh, who directed On the Road, and then Olivier uh, subsequently. So he sort of put me in contact with some of the most incredible people I've ever worked with. And I read the script. It was pretty traditional in terms of how it came together. Um, I kind of missed the mark at first. Um, in this really like unorganized, in a good way, uh, uh, sort of instinctive process of putting a movie together, Olivier didn't think that I liked it because I didn't call him at midnight the moment I read it. I was like, I don't know, maybe he'll call my agent or something because that's how it works. And he was like, I didn't think that you liked it. And I was like, I love it. I think that we should talk about it. And we did a Skype call and he was talking to me about Chloe's part for a long time. And I, the whole time I'm talking about the other part and all of a sudden we realized that we're not having the same conversation. And I was like, no, 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 There's like really only one, one part I should be playing in this movie. And um, yeah, that's it. And then well, I let's talk about it. I mean, why is it that you responded so much to this part of the album? Which I think makes sense in retrospect. Maybe it didn't end at the time, but break it down why it, why it clicked with you. Um, I had just literally missed the opportunity to play that part. He thought of, he, he wanted some, he, he, he wanted me to play the part, and then I didn't answer for a while, and so he thought I wasn't interested, therefore it went to someone else, and then I called back and fervently was like, what? Uh -huh. And so he was like, oh, we can work it out. It luckily, literally, just kismetly, naturally, thank God, like the stars aligned, and for whatever reason, um, uh, I was able to, both schedules aligned, and I ended up getting the part. And, um, you know, if I played the, the Joanne part, it would be, interesting and fun and I still would have done it. I would have catered to this movie. Um, but <laughs> it just would have been like um, fun. It would have been fun. It's just that I could kind of sort of at the same time play both parts if I was able to play Val because the only way that to really interestingly and like knowingly convey something uh, I just coincidentally happen to be the perfect mouthpiece for some of the information that is conveyed by my character about another character. So if I played Chloe's part, it would have been sort of ironic and funny and interesting and whatever, but uh, there was so many more layers to sort of sort of look through with the other part that it was just better. And it was also kind of an opportunity to vent a little bit about subjects that, right? I mean, they, it would have been an opportunity to vent playing her part too. Right. But it's just so much more fun to actually vent directly, <laughs> like literally to be able to say the words. Yeah. Was nice. um, stepping back for one moment, what is it about? I mean, you at this point can kind of pick your projects and size them, and whatever, for the most part. And why is it that time after time, um, with with the exceptions of the Twilight movies and Snow White and the Huntsman, you have gravitated towards Indies. These are, you know, craft services is not as good. There's a lot of things that are that are more challenging about doing them. But you come back. You did it before. You did it during, and you've done it since since the Twilight movies. So what is it that draws you to? Um, when you're trying to like figure out what you should be doing, how you should be spending your time, um, you know, it should never be something that you have to deliberate on a whole lot. And uh, I've chosen each project I've ever been a part of like really instinctively. I've always thought so surely that I should be doing or involved in whichever given project I happen to be working on at the time. When it comes to like the size of stuff, um, everything that you look for in a bigger movie 
or everything you look for in a smaller movie is what you hope that the bigger movie has. It's like you want to work with people that just stir you up and just absolutely motivate you in the most innate, like just, just make you want to uh, do anything. Every day you wake up, you just feel like you, you would give your all to something. And so if you don't have that on a bigger movie, you shouldn't be doing it. And it's just that they're more rare, because it's a, you know, again, it's like a bigger risk to take. And so uh, I've only done a couple big ones because it only ever felt right to do those ones. And, uh, yeah. and this one, I think was it six million dollars. It's a tiny movie, slow, like short schedule. Um, in a lot of ways, it could only have been made in Europe, right? There's a lot of things about it that are that Hollywood just kind of runs in the other way from. Can you maybe talk about what some of those might be? Yeah, I mean, the movie's like you know, about two women sitting in a room talking to each other, which doesn't seem like on paper very exciting. Uh, therefore, you like can't sell it. Uh, so, you know, Olivier's sort of weight and um, significance in Europe gave him the opportunity to have a really big budget. Like, considering what the movie's like, it should have been here, it'd be like a million dollar movie. He did it this really classically, stunningly beautiful, indulgent way. And usually in the States, it would be like, you know, there are little, they're small movies, and those are like the raw, gritty, hard to tell story movies. And then a little bit up from there is like slightly more commercial, so we'll give you more money, but you have to be a little bit like more tame. So just the fact that, um, and not tame in terms of like something that's like shocking, but just tame in terms of like being um, different or being something that's not easily digestible or like, you know, easily, uh, you can't put like a, you can't sum it up very easily. Uh, so it just wouldn't happen here. You know, the fact that that he's from there is, is actually like a, he would never be able to, yeah. So you, uh, well, you've also said that in many of your movies you play very quiet, introspective characters. This is a character that has a lot to say and, um, you know, just as an actor, how do you, how do you, how did you feel about that in terms of um, the way you approach learning your part, uh, learning your lines? I mean, there are some long, drawn out exchanges here mm -hmm. and uh, you know, do you sit in the bathtub sort of just repeating them or what's the technique? That's what you would do. That's what I would do. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, I, um, the way that me and Juliet worked on each other was uh, like defined the dynamic that we had in the movie. Uh, we got lucky, you know, on this sort of younger American perspective. She's this established, really European, you know, she, she works. Everything's like, her preparation is a huge part of what goes into doing a job for her. And I'm just like, I want everything to happen by accident. And so I didn't learn my lines. I never did. I, I, like, I, I have, uh, I'm really lucky. I, I love the script. And so it's just easy for me to remember stuff that I like. I, I, you know, um, I, wouldn't look at a, I wouldn't look at a scene until the morning of. And I had Juliet like chasing me around set, trying to run lines with me. And I was like, "Don't ever say that to me again. I never want to hear that again." Until we were like rolling camera. Um, so I didn't approach it any differently. I didn't have anything to learn. I didn't have to bring anything that I didn't, you know. I didn't. I didn't have to. Um, I didn't have to fabricate anything. It was all there. So I just trusted the process. And the thought process behind that is just you, you don't want to be over prepared in the sense so that it feels rehearsed or like it doesn't feel spontaneous. Yeah, uh, I, you know, the, the first, you, you cannot beat that first experience, you know, and even if, even if you can, even if it's just my perception, even if it's just like, you know, it didn't feel as good for me that time, it, it, that's what I want to be, like, there, there should be an experience that should be shared, like, you know, if I'm really discovering something and stumbling upon some idea or some emotion or feeling that, uh, you know, maybe we knew about before we started the movie, but that was still naturally found. It's so much better than watching someone like put something together, figure something out, and then show you what they've learned. You know what I mean? It's like, uh, so I always feel like if we rehearse too much and I think about things too much, I just have to trust that initial burst thought and energy that went into being inspired in the beginning and I and just rely on that. And then when the day comes, you're gonna feel it so much more instead of like dissecting it, dissecting it, and really memorizing it and learning it. Um, yeah, it's like lightning in a bottle, you know, like whenever anything happens on 
set that's really just fantastic, and not in terms of being like, oh, that was good, but just something that feels great, something like everyone learned something, everyone was like moved by something genuinely. Nobody can take credit for that shit. Like, literally every single person that was there that day had something to do with the fact that it happened to go like that. And so you just can't rehearse that. Um, so how does that work, though, for somebody like Juliet, who, who she rehearsing with? Is, uh, her, assistant. Like, her assistant. Her <laughs> assistant. <Yeah. laughs> yeah. um, so, and when you guys are, are working on this movie, when you were working on this movie, whether, you know, whether you're talking to Olivier or Juliet or whoever, did you have a target audience in mind? Like, are you saying, I hope these people see this movie and take X, Y, or Z? Everyone. Well, of course, of <laughs> course. But, you know, who did you want to be first in line, and what did you want them to to walk away from it thinking or doing differently? Because I get the sense that it was made for a reason. Um, I, I think people uh, that are interested in watching um, others work, and I don't just mean like for movies, but just watching anyone's process, anyone's compulsive process to get from like point A to point B. Some people don't have that feeling when they wake up and they go like, yeah, okay, here I am with my job and I'm with my life and my friends and whatever. And then there are some people that are like kind of tortured by something in the most beautiful way. And uh, I love movies about people making movies because I love that. And so uh, I think first on the list for me would be those guys. But then further down the line from that, just like, you know, just generally, I think, um, giving something, sharing your art, or sharing some expressive part of yourself uh, takes a toll, and um, women are sensitive, and uh, to see one woman in a certain stage of her life deal with another who's in a, you know, completely, conversely different part of hers, um, and, and see that they can both really help each other and um, kind of enlighten each other in a certain way. And then also, like, I love the fact that they can't either because it, sometimes your perspective is one thing and you just can never change it and that's just what it is because that's how you feel and you're never going to be able to see anything differently. Um, I would say just, like, it's, it's I don't want to, like, exclude or men who are interested in women, but it's just, like, really, it's interesting to watch. It's just interesting to watch two... Uh, really differently spirited women talk about the same thing. Um, it's rare, you never get to see that. You know, you, you, it's, it's, it's rare to be able to watch like such an indulgent thought process. And there aren't too many people interested in watching stuff like that. So just anyone who would be interested in stuff like that, probably. Well, it's sad because it actually happened more, I think, during Hollywood's golden age when you would have, you know, a movie like The Women or different ones where there's a lot of smart developed female characters unfortunately and i know this is like a big topic of discussion now female directors are hard to come by uh, and parts for developed parts i mean it's a big topic of discussion now as somebody who wants to direct down the road um what are you what are you optimistic about that is it you know are things getting better at all in your experience you work with a lot of female I think there have been incredible movies made from a female perspective like from forever, but that they're still incredibly rare and the reason we talk about the ones that are good is because they're rare and you know they stick out. Um, and you know, that's hard for me to speak to because I've been so lucky and like so stimulated. I've never had a moment that I wasn't like, you know, and this sounds wanky, because there's no way to make this sound not completely wanky. But um, I've never not had a moment where I wasn't completely challenged or I didn't have opportunities in front of me that were really interesting and, and uh, where I wanted to go. And I think that in the times that I have had those moments, if you're bored and you don't know what to do and you can't really find like where to put your energy, everyone who I really love and admire in my life is like, you know, they're not the type of women type of women to like sit around and talk about the fact that there's nothing else for them. It's like, okay, well go tell a story, dude. Go do something. And, and that sounds again really stupid because not all actors are going to be able to be in a position where they can just like go tell a story. Um, this job requires a ton of other people and a ton of other really unique circumstances to actually do the job. I'm ass lucky and so I have never experienced that. But I think it is getting better. I mean there are like, um, there are really empowered, interesting women saying stuff. 
focus on them, be inspired by them, and stop complaining about the fact that you don't have those opportunities. Like, make them. Well, I know. Even if it's not about having them for, like, be huge and famous and, like, interesting, it's like, if you're bored, then just don't be bored. Like, go, you know what I mean? The barrier of furniture is pretty low these days, and anybody can go make a movie. Too. But, um, one thing that I think is interesting is that, well, the movie asks a lot of questions about, as you say, growing older in, in, in public eye, in, in Hollywood, or rather in, in the entertainment industry. Um, what's your take on it as somebody who plans to be in this for the long haul? I mean, are you, uh, does it scare you? Does it excite you? Because on the one hand, the story is a little bit, you know, Juliet's character is a little bit um, kind of threatened by the situation. Oh, she's crazy. But she's a little crazy. But on the other hand, Juliet is playing uh, the lead character in this movie. So, I mean, she's working, and you've worked with so many um, great actresses. Of Maria Enders is crazy. Yes, yeah, it's not Juliet. <laughs> Stop calling Juliet anybody that was dialing to let her know. But um, no, but just to note, like uh, Melissa Leo and Welcome to the Rileys, Julianne Moore, Stella Ellis, um, Jodie Foster, and Pan Graham. There's a lot of women who have uh, who you've worked with who are examples of the fact that you can have a career that, that only gets better as it goes along. So, what's your what's your personal outlook for for your work and your life in this business? Um, I think you know what I like what anyone would really strive for was to feel, um, it sounds so totally inarticulate, not bored, you know, um, and not disappointed by the fact that as soon as you're not bored, that those things that always compelled you uh, don't always need to be the same things. If this ceases to compel me, I will not be disappointed by the fact that I'm not an actor anymore, you know, um, or if or if I can't find an area to be, basically, if I keep, if, if I always feel the way that I feel right now, which is uh, really just constantly, expansively explorative with amazing people, just people that really facilitate that, and if that like left immediately, I, I would um, do something else, you know, uh, and uh, yeah, who knows, man? I don't know. Well, last question for me, and then we'll take. From the audience, I believe, and then uh, set everybody free. But basically, uh, what have you made of the fact that a movie that came out, I believe, in April here, that was on the film festival circuit last year, um, has found such uh, sort of favor and an embrace at this point, all this time later, and particularly, um, you know, that, that your performance has had this kind of response that it's had. How does it, how does it feel to get some love? <laughs> I can't, it's weird. Yeah, I was like, uh, and, um, I was really surprised by it, and, and like in the best way, you know? Um, I've always been really, uh, I'm so, 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 so proud of everything that went into this. You know, I was able to meet Olivier, who directed the movie. We just did another movie together. So I've gotten to know him really in a much more, I've really gotten to know more of him, uh, which makes me even more proud of this. You know, because now I'm like, yeah, dude, that's so cool. Like, even the Americans thought it was cool. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, it was ages ago. It's a foreign film. It's really kind of diagonal in terms of story. It's not like the most straight down the line, easily digestible, entertaining movie. Um, and it's also not like extreme and like, you know, drastic. And usually, like, you know, people love in the States, people are like, oh, she got cancer and shaved her head and she's screaming and crying and blah, and it's like, oh, okay, well, that deserves some attention. So this was really surprising. I was like, you know, I, it's, it's a sort of subdued, thoughtful meditation that we all had a good time doing and I'm glad that everyone liked it. And, you know, and so, right? yeah. Okay, we're going to you, but let's just say up front, no propositions, solicitations, any of that nonsense, job <laughs> offers, job requests, let's just go right, right to the question, sir. sense. 
Uh, and so, uh, yeah, in, in terms of preparation for this, you know, I, I am not Valentine, but the moments where I felt uh, closest to her and where I felt the most honest and, and um, also just in the moments where I felt everyone was being surprised by a certain idea that we kind of already knew but that we rediscovered and on screen, which is what the goal is. Um, I, you feel closer to yourself. Like when you really, really, really find a moment that works, it's usually when you actually step, it's, you're not stepping outside of yourself, for me at least. And you know, it depends on what role, well, obviously. Like, I guess if you're playing somebody who's drastically different to you. But even in that case, most actors that I know and that I relate to could justify um, mass murder. Because if they're playing that part, then there are a million reasons why that person did that. And so it's like, you know what? They had not at that childhood. And so that's just, I would do the same thing. Um, so usually you kind of feel like you're getting uh, like as close to yourself as you possibly can. But yeah, it's weird, because I've also said the opposite. I've also been like, oh, you can really step outside of yourself. But I think mainly it's not about not being yourself. It's just about letting go of inhibition and awareness of the setup circumstance and finding the truth of why you're there. It's not about losing everything and just like not knowing where you are. It's just, it's getting rid of these little setup, uh, you know, like uh, uh, logistical things and being able to, I stepped outside of my logistical self and I actually found myself for a second, like for real, and I didn't think about anything else but who in front of me at that moment for me. I give somebody in the back a chance the very last row by the exit door. Go ahead. Again, probably why it's surprising that the movie's being sort of somewhat acknowledged here because it's frustrating to watch the movie because when questions are asked and never answered, then you have to think for yourself. And you're like, wait, what? <laughs> um, but I don't know, dude. I think like I think my answer to that question, which I actually don't know if I should, I I, I think I've answered it, but it's a slippery slope because again, I do want people to think for themselves, but um. And this is just me, like, I don't know, Olivia might feel completely differently, we don't, we don't speak about stuff like this a lot, which is another weird, interesting thing. Um, but I think that, you know, she's, she was trying to get across this point of view, her entire uh, time knowing this woman. And Juliet's character is influenced by mine emotionally, but she doesn't listen. She doesn't listen to a word she says. And... Uh, I think that the only way to really get her to hear her and actually like really she knows she got her point across was just by shopping the shit out of her and leaving. And uh, I don't think she falls off a cliff or anything crazy like that. I don't think she like jumps, I don't think she like runs off and dramatically like commits suicide. Who knows, maybe she does, maybe you think she does. But um, yeah, that was my answer for that. Because I always really needed, I was like, you know, obviously dying. I was just like, why, 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 where is she? Does she, have, in my mind, she goes back and you don't see this, but she's in the back of the theater, like watching the show, just to make sure, like just to curiously, but, like I need to see that come to fruition. Um, yeah, I think, yeah, I think it's like some people that just can't hear it. You just need to show them in a different way. So basically, there should be a sequel for it. Yeah, <laughs> it's called Valentine's Song. <laughs> okay, let's get a female. Let's mix this up. I can't see. I hope. I hope this. I can't see it from here. So I wait. Go ahead. <laughs> Stage work is the question. Just. Um. Yeah. I guess I have seen really like very very little. Um. So I think I would need to be. I need to see more of it. But, um, you know, even on set, like, if you have a bad crew, and I mean bad, people that don't care, people that are slow, people that are stupid, people that should not be where they are, like, it, it really, really affects you, like, it, 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 it's, the wor it's the worst feeling and it ruins everything, like, there's just, energy is such a contagious and absolutely true thing, you know, actors that are able to 
be on the spot and produce authentic, honest work when they're affected badly by people, I look at them like, you are a crazy person. How are you doing this? Like, you, this is this the worst mood on set? How are you, how are you able to fake this right now? Um, and so I think to feel that, like, with so many people, and day after day have to be a different experience, I think I would really get off on that. And I think it would really pull something out of me. Um, so I, I think, yes, but that I would need to watch a lot more because I, I just have no idea. Such a such a foreign concept. But like right now, I feel like I feel like uh, like like I want to say yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like yes, I would definitely want to do that. <laughs> One bonus. I think we're running out. We'll do one uh, bonus question, but it's you and I first. You mean our set, like in Sils Maria? Uh, in the cabin? In the chalet? Oh, at the end. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's interesting. Um, it, yeah, I was surprised to see that too. It's like really extremely sterile, yeah. Um, but at the same time, you know, like within a circumstance like that, or like within that environment, something really charged and like stifled and angry and passionately emotional, whatever happens in a place like that, hot. And um, also, like, stifling, you know what I mean? That's, like, I could see that, but I, I feel you, you know what I mean? Um, I was always really curious about the play that would have resulted, like, cause, you know, he wrote kind of, like, a bare sort of outline for what that play would have been like. Um, and I think that probably in his head there was a lot more that we didn't have up. And so I'm really curious about what that play would have been. Like, I want to read more about it more than I could possibly know. <laughs> Thank you so much for doing this. Thank you.